Look what I did just for you, Faceless. I straightened up that clock, uh, that uh, lamp. Uh, lamp's not on. None of the lamps in this place have working bulbs. That's just a reflection from the window. Did not fix the clock. The clock's broken. I put a new battery in it. It doesn't work. Can't do anything about that. Everything's broken in this place, but I don't care because the price is right. All right, so this is a weekend slash end of month wrap up. I'm not going to really wrap up the whole month because half my videos are wrap ups, it looks like. But I'm going to talk about what I read the last few days when I'm reading right now and more about my plans for next month. Right now, I'm in the middle of The Prince and the Pauper. Um, this is one where, you know, I'm studying Spanish, uh, where I uh, get a, in this case, a, a Spanish translation of the book and get the same translation in audio and read along with it. It's a great book. It's Mark Twain's The Prince and the Pauper. I don't believe I've read it before. I, I'm pretty sure... Researching this video, I looked at uh, various movie versions and stuff. I, I pretty distinctly remember the American TV uh, movie version, Disney Channel. Not Disney Channel, Disney series. There was a series in the old days before cable called The Wonderful World of Disney or something like that. And uh, they did a multi-part adaptation with Guy Williams who was uh, had been Zorro and was the dad on Lost in Space as, as the as the adult hero of the book Miles uh, what's his name and some kid is the kids there was a version in the 70s which I might watch after this called Cross Swords which was by the uh, folks who did the, the 70s uh, Three Musketeers movie it stars Oliver Reed as Miles and uh, they age up the character, apparently, and I think um, some other good people are in it. I might watch that. That sounds that looks fun. It's on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Uh, but, yeah, I'm about uh, two hours into it, uh, into the audiobook version of a seven-hour book. I was surprised how quickly... You know, the basic setup is these two kids look alike. One is the uh, is Edward the Ninth, I think. No, wait, wouldn't be. I don't know. Who would, whatever, whoever. Uh, he's the Prince of Wales, and this this uh, kid who lives in London happen to look alike, and they and they meet up, and they decide to change places, and hijinks ensue. Um, it's a lot of uh, complications, historically accurate complications in terms of. The prince becoming king uh, when his his dad dies very suddenly. Uh, what I want to say about it, but I, I was surprised how quickly I I had forgotten or I didn't know how quickly um, the kids try and get out of the situation. You know, almost immediately once they're once they switch and they're trying to impersonate the other, they're like, like, oh no no, I'm I'm. I'm actually just this kid. I'm not. I'm not the prince. I'm this kid from the, and um, and and the prince says the same thing. I'm a prince. Don't you know? Don't make me scrub the floors and things like this. Uh, he's the 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 pauper's father is an abusive alcoholic and reminds me very much of Stevenson, which I've been reading a lot. It's very similar in vein to Stevenson. Mark Twain wrote this in the middle of writing Huckleberry Finn. He he wrote half of Huckleberry Finn, put it aside, wrote this, which is, uh, you know, this is a straight adventure novel. I mean, it's got a lot of uh, Twain's uh, uh, preoccupations in there about class and social justice and things like that, you know, but told in an adventure format so it's not um uh the, the deep kind of treatment that huckleberry finn would have of, of social uh, wrongs but it's uh, really fun to read i'm going to get back to that um let's see that will be that is actually the 
the 19th book on my 100 book challenge since I'm reading along with the Spanish with the Spanish text at the same time I counted on my challenge if I was just listening to the audio book I would not count it on my challenge 19 out of 100 it's going to take a long time I'm going to have to really blow through books this coming this coming um, month I do have a lot of horror books I found a lot of these I bought a bunch of uh, ebook packages of let me see if I can get one of the, the covers up here this is a line of books uh, the paperbacks from hell line from Valancourt books I think is the publisher of the line uh, edited by Grady Hendrix, who's a well-known um, figure in the horror community. He's written many novels, kind of with catchy, kind of quippy names. Uh, this one's called The Pack. It's, these are reissues of books from the 70s. Uh, Grady, Grady Hendrix wrote a book called Paperbacks from Hell, which was a survey of uh, horror from the, from the 70s, mostly in the 70s, paperback original horror from the so-called horror boom of the late 70s, early 80s. Let's see what else I got here. And I've bought a ton of them. Uh, let's see who I've got. And so I'm looking forward to reading some of those if I can. There's a... Uh, and as I said before, um, I'm going to read a lot of books I have by Ray Garten, who very sadly passed away just last week uh he wasn't that old i don't think i haven't got a lot of information on it, but i'll talk about more about him once i read some of his books there's i've got a ton of anthologies i picked up from different uh you know different facebooks i used to belong to uh for different podcasts and or small horror publishers this one is called a aikman's heirs which is a tribute anthology uh a tribute to the excellent, excellent horror uh, short story writer Robert Aikman, who wrote *The Bells* and many other stories. So this, I might read some of these. I don't know. Sometimes these these tribute anthologies can be kind of hit and miss. You know, it's just people writing in tribute to uh, various uh, older authors. Like the, you know, there's tons of there's a Bradbury one. There's a. Uh, um, you can see some, uh, there's some uh, pretty good writers in here. Lisa Tuttle, I have a couple of her books I want to read too. Michael Sisko, he's an interesting writer. John Langan, of course. Brian Evanson, probably one of the best short story writers working today. Uh, Lisa Tuttle, though, I've got a couple of her books. She's, uh, I read one book of her short stories, and I think I've got one more plus a novel. Um, this is the one I read before. She's excellent, excellent writer. This is another Val Valancourt uh, reissue paper paperback from Hell. She's kind of associated in some way, I think, with uh, George R. R. Martin. So she's written a lot of different genres, but her horror fiction is really coming back into print now. And uh, she's excellent writer of horror and just excellent stylist in general. So there's a lot that I can read for horror uh, next month for that uh, challenge that's coming up. I And I'm glad to know that the adventure, uh, Spring into Adventure challenge is going on because I want to read a lot more adventure. I keep finding stuff on here. I want to read, uh, there's a book by... I have a few more. I dug out all my Stevenson books, Robert Louis, Louis Stevenson books. There's one that I think I'm going to read as soon as I finish um, <clears throat> as soon as I finish Prince and the Popper. I'm going to read this book called oh, where's more? He's got a book of travel essays. I want to read those too. The complete no 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 show more. Here it is. This is interesting to me. People probably know. This is called the wrong box. Here it says Robert Louis Stevenson. However, it's actually co-written uh, with uh, and Lloyd Osborne. I 
did some research on this, found that Lloyd Osborne was Stevenson's son-in-law, and he and they collaborated on three books. On this one, at least, uh, Lloyd Osborne wrote the first draft, or he wrote a novel, and uh, then uh, Stevenson rewrote it. You know, and of course, he's the more famous writer, so now it's just considered Stevenson's book. But uh, doing that research led me to find, uh, led led me to get a certain kind of. Doing that research online on Wikipedia led YouTube to recommend the uh, the movie to me. There's a movie with Michael Caine in the, I think it's from the 60s, you know, which I really want to watch. So I thought, okay, i got to read the book first because just that's just the happier way for me to do it. So I'm going to read that, see how that goes. Um, there's, I've got a lot of... Uh, I thought I had, oh, and I have just a general book of essays of Robert Louis Stevenson, too. Oh, and the other, um, and uh, the, the big collection of Stevenson I've got still has, I still have The Black Arrow and Kidnapped in that. So maybe I'll keep working on those. There's a book that, um, a short book by Conan Doyle that uh, Elvis, um, Mark, at Book Time for Elvis, read last week, last month, and, and he enjoyed it, called The Tragedy of Carrasco. I'm going to read that, even though I cheated and downloaded that free when I'm trying to make myself not download anything. I've got The Ghost Pirates by William Hope Hodson. I've got my whole thing up here now with all these billions of things I'm not going to read. Uh, this book called The Parasite by Conan Doyle that I own. Hmm. That sounds intriguing. I don't know anything about it, though, so I'll discuss that later. So what am I going to do? So in whatever month is coming up, June, not, not June, in May, I'll be reading a lot of horror. I'll be continuing with um, adventure. And trying to concentrate on shorter books so I can get through a little more of this challenge. I've got, oh, let me show you this. Okay, ignore the Spanish. It's too hard to change it back and forth. But this is this is the filters on my Kindle, right? So Descargado is um, downloaded books. Uh, no Liedo is books I haven't read. And Liedo is, uh, Liedo is books I have read. So... And that doesn't include, does it include documents? No. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, on this one it does. So I've got over a 1,000 books, eight samples, 215 documents. That means side-loaded documents that I've downloaded from different places. We can buy, you know, there's different bundles. I used to buy about a lot of those bundles, um, ebook bundles that, that there's a couple companies that put them out. I stopped buying them because I, I never end up reading them all. And and like I've said many times on this, and for some reason it, it forces me to link to my Audible account. It says I have 45 audiobooks. I just kind of ignore that. Collections, there are 36 collections. I've made comics. I don't even know what comics those are. You must have probably bought them back when they had that other, before Amazon bought that comic comics reader company and ruined it. I don't read comics on this, obviously. It's not a way to do, read comics. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is, I mean, even even if I do the 100 book challenge, I'm still going to be over a thousand. My goal is to have under, just if I could just get under 1,000 unread books on my Kindle, I'd, I'd feel like I accomplished something. So I will probably... Uh, keep going after 100 before I buy anything new it would make me feel better about all this junk I have on here and much of it, many many masterpieces and a little bit of junk uh, let's see what else I've got here that I can talk about oh okay so I'm uh, interesting that a lot of times I'll see a book channel talk about a book I wish I could read, and then 
And it only finally started occurring to me to actually look and see if I have it, because here are two that I have that I thought I wouldn't be able to join in, in little... There's Anno Dracula. That's not the one, though. It's the, oh, there's The Terror by Dan Simmons, which people are talking about doing a group read of. I don't know if I'm going to join that. I really don't want to join Foxer. I don't want to join any more sites. I don't know. There's probably no reason not to, but... Okay, so yeah, this is the one. And then on Steve, and Steve Donahue's channel, he, he's doing this great series of, he's going through all his bookshelves. I believe he's done three of his bookshelves, talked about every book on them. One of them he pulled up, Anno Dracula by Kim Newman, which is a book I liked a lot, and I never, and I sort of dropped off the rest of the series. I thought, well, I wish I could get back into those. But I look forward, and I do have the next one in this series, Anno Dracula, the Bloody Red Baron, which is Dracula during World War One. And so at least I get to read that before um, my my um, my hundred book challenge is over. So that's all possibles for next month. I'm doing the uh, Horror Mayhem challenge. Although, it, you know, part of the challenge is having to write all those host names down in every vi video. Uh, if anybody knows of a way to just copy those over. You know when you're writing uh, your, your notes, your details for your video, and you start typing in um, uh, the names of channels you mention, and it has to show up as, you know, when you pick from the list. I'm not explaining this very well. But if you copy and paste them over from uh, another list, they, they don't show up as live links, so people don't get notifications of them. And there's a lot of people on that, uh, on that uh, horror mayhem uh, list, so I end up spending quite a lot of time typing in all those 16 names, plus all the other people. I do want to give people credit, but they may not get credit for the horror mayhem channel on this one. Um, and they must be just getting billions of notifications. I have a gnat here. Go away. All right, so obviously I'm just tapering off here, not saying anything intelligent. So I will end it here, and we'll talk again.